skill or not, it's Cashew. And mate, if you've ever watched one of my many, many, many pre-sequel playthroughs, then you know that I always play the vanilla version of the game. I never use any overhaul mods or anything like that, except for that one. And I never cheat to give myself items in any way, with one exception. I have a rule for myself that when I get into true Vault Hunter mode, I am allowed to use Give Save Editor to give myself a little-known gun called the Moonscaper. The Moonscaper is one of, if not the, most fun guns in Borderlands history. But what does it do? To me, it just looks like a landscaper from BO2 with more knockback, and you'd be right. That's exactly what this is intended to be. Just a little wacky and offensive gun to put in with the Tail Season Pass as an incentive to Borderlands fans to buy all the OG Tales episodes before they released. But what they didn't intend was for this gun to be the most broken movement tool in Borderlands history. So without further ado, this is the Moonscaper. <laughs> You heard me right, I said movement tool, because as fun as it is to make enemies go flying, it's much more fun to do it to yourself. Let me break this down for you. When you shoot the Moonscaper's pellets at a flat or sloped surface, you'll see that the pellets will rise from the ground. When they do rise, this means that they will deal their knockback, even to you. Further meaning that if you move at the right time when they explode, you will be sent flying from the knockback. But to be honest, it's pretty hard to time like that, which is why we're also going to be using the Logan's gun. Since the Logan's gun's pellets deal pure splash damage, they can blow up the Moonscaper's pellets as soon as they're shot, which allows you to get all sorts of creative with how you use the Moonscaper. You can wait, then jump straight up for a crap ton of height. You can not jump at all and literally get pushed to the other side of the map in no time at all. Or a combo between the two to get the most distance and height possible, zooming over big chunks of whatever level you're on. This is all made much more prominent by shooting the gun multiple times for just one jump and wearing and slamming an Acrobat Oz kit for bonus movement speed. Just having the Moonscaper in your inventory makes makes you play the game in an entirely different way, making some missions that are otherwise really annoying really fun. Like the first part of Intelligences of the Artificial Persuasion, for example, which usually sees the player run slowly in between three power plants that are all very far away from each other to just get to the other side of one lava pool. For most people, it's that part of the game. The bit that you never want to do but you just have to to get to the stuff that you actually like. But with the Moonscaper, it's one of the best missions in the game as you zoom from plant to plant in no time at all, feeling like you're the most professional speedrunner imaginable. It's like the mission was made for the Moonscaper as it uses it to its full potential. Starting off with a tight invisible wall you need to get over, followed by a long stretch of land you have to cover that you can just zoom past when you got a Moonscaper. Then finally, this huge tower at the final plant that you can just jump to the top of with proper timing. Does it break the game? Yes. Is that a good thing? Absolutely. Playing with the Moonscaper makes the game feel so fresh and fun. It's like you're playing the game for the first time all over again. This time it's like way better. <laughs> it also helps a lot with farming, with some farms feeling like they were made for you to use it. Like if you want to get an IVF or cryophobia from the bosun, you usually have to run all the way through this gauntlet going through like three different rooms before you actually get to the boss. But with the Moonscaper, you can just jump into this open window and go to the bosun immediately. <laughs> Another great example is farming despair and self-loading for the Thunderfire and Meganae respectively. Usually the only way to get to the is to go through what is basically the entire map going from every jump pad possible to slowly take you to the arena. But with the Moonscaper, you can just go through the back door since you don't need the jump pads. I can't state this enough, the flow state you get from having a Moonscaper in your inventory is invaluable. You'll be spamming with some guns, swapping to cry or a matching element, you know, slam for the bonus movement speed with your Acrobat, and after all those enemies are dead, you just shoot the Moonscaper and BAM, you're immediately onto the next guy. So how can you get this gun nowadays? You mentioned you gived it in, but surely there's a way to farm- no. It is impossible possible to obtain normally in the game. You might have caught what I said before about the Tales from the Borderlands Season Pass. That was the only way to get it. If you bought that back in 2015, you would get a shift code when redeemed, you could grab it from Shifty Sheldon's Fender and Concordia. But 2K Australia and Gearbox never added a way to get any of those guns outside of that. There was some hope in September of 2023 though, when Gearbox released a new shift code for the Heartbreaker as part of their Loot the Universe event, which was a gun that was only ever found in the Coda pre-sequel before that point, making it usable legit for the first time ever. Fans were pretty ecstatic about what this could mean for the forgotten tail season pass guns, like the Company Man, Fast Talker, and of course the Moonscaper, but sadly the only thing that the event had to offer for pre-sequel after that was just some golden keys. I would love nothing more than this gun to actually be usable legit in the game. Gearbox has shown they have the power to add it in now, so maybe if we make it known that we want it back, the next time they do a promotional loot the universe type event, they'll give us the right gun. But on a disappointing note, the Moonscaper can only be got in the game via save edit of some kind, which means that's a big L for the modern console players. But those of you who have pre-sequel on PC, I implore you, please get yourself gibbed, 
Give yourself a level 1 Moonscaper and Logan's Gun and just enjoy the ride. If you were someone who played pre-sequel back in the day and disliked it, please, oh my god, try the game again with a Moonscaper and just watch how much more fun you're gonna have. If you don't end up having fun with it, by all means, come back to the video and insult me or my country in the comment section or whatever, but that's not gonna happen as I know you're gonna love it. The Moonscaper to this day is still the best movement tool in any Borderlands game, with the only thing getting close being Salvador and Borderlands 2 rocket jumping. Borderlands 3 shied away from this kind of thing with grenade jumps barely giving you any height anymore and the Ruby's Wrath being the closest thing you have to rocket jumping, which barely even works for it by the way. I really hope that Gearbox can see the value in having a really fun gun that can be used for movement in these games, because even though it might make the game look broken, my argument would be who cares if it also looks and is fun. Yeah, that's all I got for you right now. I really appreciate you watching this vid mate but let me know your thoughts on the moonscaper if you've used it if you like it as much as i do and if you want to try it out thanks to this video i'd appreciate a sub if you could do me the honor and if you want to see more from me i did just release a video talking about if a new borderlands game was sold mainly off of its end game but thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time hey before the video ends i just want to shout out my channel members they are jbh who was granted access to the white room the most exclusive area in the white house wesker 520 who dreamed they woke up then immediately got punched in the face they then woke up for real and just were on edge like all day angel b who controls the path of all buses that they are behind the wheel of they're a bus driver i, I tried to make it sound cool but yeah they're a bus driver and chimmy scrimpy who has been missing for three weeks the only message left was a piece of paper that said i've gone to liberate the rats so they could be fucking anywhere but thank you guys so much for showing the extra support i really appreciate it if you want to try your best at being as cool as these guys which i don't even know is possible the best way to try would be to hit the join button just below the video but yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time